In another video I created, which is entitled Polymers Basic Introduction, I talked about three types of polymerization reactions, radical polymerization, anionic polymerization, and cationic polymerization. In each of those three reactions, the monomer that was used was some form of substituted ethylene molecule. But here we're going to talk about condensation polymerization. In condensation polymerization, typically what you have is two different functional groups reacting with each other in a condensation reaction with the removal of water. And in the process of this reaction, you have many monomeric units combining to form a larger polymer. Now, the two functional groups, they can be present in two different molecules. And sometimes the two functional groups can be present within the same molecule. So let's look at the first case where we have two different functional groups in two different molecules. So the first molecule contains a carboxylic acid. That's going to be the reacting functional group. This is 1,4-benzene dicarboxylic acid. And we're going to react this with 14 diamino benzene. So the amino group is going to react with the carboxylic acid. What happens when a carboxylic acid reacts with an amine? Well, water is going to be removed. So we're going to take out the OH group from the carboxylic acid and one hydrogen from the NH2 group. Now this process requires heat. Heat is going to drive water away out of the reaction chamber, allowing the condensation reaction to take place. So we're going to remove water and connect the carbonyl carbon with the amino nitrogen, and we're going to form an amide. So that's a condensation reaction. So now we have two units combined into one. Now, this reaction is not going to stop here. Because now, we can react this part of the molecule with another 1,4-benzene dicarboxylic acid. If we do that, We're going to get rid of the one hydrogen from the NH2 molecule. We're going to get rid of the OH group. And we're going to form an amide, but we're going to draw it in this direction. So here we're going to have a carbonyl group. The benzene ring. And then another carboxylic acid. Now, if we want to, we can continue the reaction. We can react this carboxylic acid with the amino group in this molecule extending the chain. So once again, we're going to lose the OH group and just one hydrogen. We're going to get an NH group. And this is just going to continue. So now let's identify the repeating unit in this polymer. The repeating unit is here. Notice that we have two carbonyl groups in the first molecule and two nitrogen atoms in the second molecule. So when we combine those two units, we should have two nitrogen atoms and two carbonyl groups in the repeating unit, as well as two benzene molecules too. Now we're going to put an N here because this polymer can be very big. It can have 100 units, it can have 1,000 units, it can have 10,000 units. Now this particular polymer is known as a poly 
amide. And this is due to the functional group that's formed when a carboxylic acid reacts with an amine. As we can see, we get an amide functional group. Now this particular polyamide is known as Kevlar. Now let's talk about some other ones. There's also polyesters, polyurethane, but that's a topic for another day. The next example that I'm going to go over is going to be one in which we have the two different functional groups found within the same molecule. For this example, I'm going to use 6-amino hexanoic acid. So as you can see, we have the amine in the left of the molecule and the carboxylic acid on the right. So this is going to be another polyamide. So we're going to heat up the reaction mixture and we're going to lose water in a condensation reaction. So I'm going to remove the OH from the carboxylic acid and one hydrogen from the NH2 group, just like before. So we're going to get an amide connecting these two units together. This is how amino acids combine to form protein. Because in an amino acid, you have a carboxylic acid and you have an amino group. And so whenever you get a protein, that's basically a condensation polymer. Proteins are polyamines when you think about it. Now, we can react this part with another molecule, but particularly this part of the other molecule. And so this is going to be another NH. And the process will just repeat itself. And we could stop it here. So let's identify the repeating unit. If we look at our monomer, if we read it from left to right, we could start with the nitrogen atom. And we can end with the carbonyl group of the carboxylic acid. So that is going to be the repeating unit. So that's another example of a polyamide. Now, this particular polyamide is known as nylon 6. I'm sure you heard of that one before. So that's the basics of condensation polymerization reactions. Basically, two functional groups react with each other in order to remove water and connect the two units to form a larger chain.